Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any of our platforms. Please reach out to me directly. I am tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. This is the rarest of modern Oris watches. Their high horology offering launched in 2014 and made in 110 pieces in rose gold. This is the Oris Artelier 110 years limited edition, powered by Oris's first modern in-house caliper, which took 10 years to develop. It is a celebration of what what the manufacturer out of Holstein has accomplished in its time. 110 years times 43 millimeters in diameter, 13.6 millimeters thick from lug tip to lug tip, 50.9 millimeters with a 23 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Now the timepiece is large, but it's not huge. Some people consider this to be something approaching a bargain priced IWC Portuguese, and I'm not gonna disagree with that, with the exception of the fact that this is manual wind and those are automatic. This is a great example of a timepiece that offers real value, hiding in plain sight, and a fantastic alternative to a mainstream brand. The watch wears large on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, but not so large that I couldn't recommend it for my wrist size. Especially when you zoom out a little bit and you get a perspective shot from a distance, you can see that the watch is a good fit. Now, I wouldn't wear it on a smaller wrist than mine, but if your wrist is 16 centimeters circumference or larger, you're good to go. And because it is a fairly thin watch for the power reserve and it has a sloped flank, it should fit underneath most cuffs. Do one last down the barrel shot. You can see the lugs are out the edge, not beyond, but right up against it. The strap is high grade. It's unusual to find large rectangular scale alligator leather straps on an Oris, but this is a flagship piece. We have a gloss finish, medium brown. We have a folded edge in profile, a monotone stitch on the bottom. You can see a lovely brown terracotta style calfskin, really gorgeous, no crimping, no gouging. Oris factory strap. It has a lovely little contrasting binding underneath, and we have a rose gold pin buckle, which is dress watch appropriate. Traditionally, dress watches come with pin buckles, and a case that is beautifully delicate, not in terms of its construction, it's robustly built, but there's a delicacy to the way these lugs are stepped out from the case band. This slight flange between the bezel and the case band, and this lovely teardrop profile of each individually defined lugs all polished. You can see that we have a narrow Oris branded crown large when viewed end on, but in profile relatively narrow like a vintage watch. We have an opaline or frosted silver dial. We have small seconds at nine o'clock. You can see the watch does not have hacking seconds, but that's just about the only feature it lacks. We have a power reserve indicator that's non-linear. Initially, it moves relatively slowly, but as the power reserve discharges, it begins to cover more physical area on the dial in the same period of time. So it's designed to make it quite obvious that the watch is running down. Now, the reason it works this way is because Oris calculated that using a single large mainspring, 1.8 meters in length, by the way, they were gonna have sort of a torque plateau where the torque was very consistent and then after that it would start to fall off. So what they did was they marked the one and a half day remaining section of the power reserve to let you know that the watch is gonna keep best time and stay in the plateau of the torque curve as long as the power reserve indicator is upstream of this red slash. So you don't wanna wait for it to get close to zero. You wanna at least wind it before it reaches 1.5 days remaining. That's why it works the way it does. And it is designed to accelerate faster and faster as it approaches that point to let you know well in advance you're getting there. We have sunken sub registers and you can see that we even have a downwardly stepped track for reading the hours and the minutes. We have applied rose gold indices, most likely rose gold plated along with the hands, along with little rose gold cabochon outboard on the downwardly stepped track. Perhaps surprisingly, it is loomed. Not a ton of loom, although you can see the hands are generously luminescent. You can tell approximately what the time is. Flip it all over, we have caliber 110, which is deeply impressive. First, it's big, 15 French lean, as the size would be. It is 34 millimeters in diameter. It's almost the size of a pocket watch movement. In fact, it is the size of many average sized pocket watch movements. Large barrel, 
which has been satinated circular. We have vertical satination on the bridges. Take a look at the bevels. Oris advertises these as hand finished. And while I don't believe they are entirely hand finished, I do believe they're probably stored mechanically. They genuinely look like they are finished off using a handheld buffing tool because they're rounded, mirrored. They're not straight from top to bottom. They have a little bit of an arc across their surface. That's deeply impressive considering the price point of the watch. Screw heads are polished. We have a lovely little black polished click. And if you look at the teeth of the barrel, they haven't been artisanally polished, but they have been polished. You can see that there is a cam-based system responsible for the non-linear action of the power reserve indicator. Individually numbered, this is 76 of 110. It's all water resistant down to 30 meters. It has a three hertz beat rate. It does have 10 days, 240 hours of power reserve and 40 pivot joules. You can also appreciate that it has a wonderful little rack and pinion style micrometric adjustment system. Most of the tuning is gonna be done with the Etichron keys right here for rate and beat error, gold and silver respectively. But then for really small adjustments, we have that rack and pinion system, which is super cool. Genuinely attractive, and I love the fact that they went with this linear brushed finish rather than the more predictable Cote de Genève. I love everything about this watch. A rare beauty from perhaps an unexpected place, Oris. Reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for pricing.